those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Believers, in times of adversity, remember to anchor your faith in God's unwavering love and promises. Trust in His divine plan and find strength in His presence. May this message serve as a source of encouragement and reaffirm your unshakable relationship with Him. Remain blessed as you listen. Why is it that God seems to be limited to do business with many people? It looks like it, it seems like one out of every 1,000 or 10,000 are the ones who are really mightily used by God. I used to think that it was because others were carrying out less or more spiritual exercises. But as I've grown in the things of the Spirit, I've found out that that's not exactly the reason. Ready for it? Reason number one. Reason number one, I, I, I consider this, I consider this to be the fundamental determinant of the entrance of the anointing and the power of God in the life of a man. Your motive and your motivation. Your motive and your motivation. Let me tell you something. I have found out over the years that the state of your heart is the greatest determinant of the power and the glory of God upon your life. Beyond your fasting, beyond your prayer, beyond night vigils, beyond listening to messages, as important as those things are, the state of your heart overrides them all if you want God to do business with you. Now, so many people, well-meaning people, who want to see the miraculous power of God, they want to be mightily used by God, lack this one thing. The motive and the motivation behind their pursuit is corrupted from beginning. So every activity they carry out is corrupted on the strength of that foundational thing. Are we together? From those who seek God because they want to build a career around ministry. Those who have applied for jobs and it looks like jobs are not forthcoming and they console themselves by saying let's go to the vineyard and use ministry to build a career. Corrupted motives. Are we together? To those who desire the anointing to show their family members that they are not failures you were growing up and they told you that you'll be a failure in life and now you're saying lord give me the anointing to show my mother or my stepmother that i'm not a failure as well meaning as that motif is it is corrupted are we together now that's the reason why you find certain people they seem not to be engaging in as much spiritual activity in terms of physical exertion fasting prayer but it seems like god has so much interest in them he will go beyond their personal spiritual lives to demonstrate his glory upon their life motive your motivation I can tell you this and I tell you sincerely eight or nine out of every ten pastors and men of God that call me send me text messages sow seeds and are desperately looking for anointing and grace most of them their motives are corrupted are we together so I can go for 40 days fasting but God looks beyond the physical activity and he scans and judges my motive. This for me has been the ultimate determinant of the kinds of people 
that God does business with and that he will do business with in these days. Is God speaking to us? The state of your heart. Let's look at a few scriptures. John chapter 12. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to us, he's Israel. John chapter 12, it says, And Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus who had been dead who was raised from the dead and the Bible says there they made unto him supper and Martha served follow carefully but Lazarus was one of them that sat at table now let's watch something that happened and then Mary took a pound of ointment and anointed the feet the Bible says okay took a pound of ointment of spikenard pionard very costly take note very costly then the bible says that she anointed the feet of jesus and wiped his feet with her hair are we together and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment and then something happened verse 4 and then one of his disciples a man called judas iscariot simon's son which should betray him he responded to that act of worship verse 5 why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor now watch this this is part of jesus's ministerial cabinet a woman comes and takes from her alabaster box according to one of the gospels and breaks it before his feet pure nerd the bible tells us it was her wages for one year and she took it and broke it at his feet and used her hair that is the glory of a woman to wipe his feet and then when other people when jesus was looking at the motivation of this woman the sincere communication of her appreciation someone else was looking at the cost implication and the wastage are we together but he never said you wasted this he tried to angle it in a way that should look like he was concerned about the treasury of the house are we together and this is what he said verse 5 please let's go back to verse 5 why was not this ointment sold so for him you can still worship jesus another way go and sell it bring the money let's add to the treasury but his motive was so that he will have more money to be stealing are we together it was never about jesus it was never about his desire to see his master exalted are we together now judas had no business listen although he was a sincere person he wanted to use jesus the moment he came and found out that there was a flourishing ministry he looked at it carefully and saw the financial potentials that were in that ministry and he strategically positioned himself being elected the treasurer he found out that he could keep motivating people and the more they brought money to the ministry he would help himself so you would see judas at every crusade you would see judas attending to the poor collecting all the seeds to jesus you would look from that experience and say what a zealous man the first to appear in every crusade ground the one to respond to the necessity of jesus but the motive behind it was his belly are we together the next verse verse six 
this he said not that he what cared for the poor the bible says but because he was a that was his mo the motive he was looking for more money so he could steal so he angled it in a way that made it look like he was having an appetite for god the bible says and he had the back and bear what was put therein in other words if they change judas from being a treasurer to an ordinary disciple and made thomas or peter the new treasurer all of a sudden he would not care about any sacrifice again are we together this is an example of the motive and the motivation behind so many people you would see them pray for the anointing as if they really love sick people you would see them pray for prosperity as though they really really want to help and bless people you would see them fast as they they pray for crowds and you would think they are really compassionate you would think they care so much about the people coming but at the heart of their pursuit is this self-centered demonic and many times satanic motivation are we together now how many men of god use the anointing use members use so many people to boost their ego and when they go around you see pastors gather to talk and you'll be amazed at the content of their discussion have you seen my members have you seen the chief that this one bought for me there are 20 oil company workers in my church there are senators in my church there are this and that and that i mean we grew from 5000 to 20000 in one year great news but then what is the motivation behind it and so we use those things to scorn others we use those things to command honor when pastors come together the ones who seem to be having results or desirous of results seem to push others and sit in a position of honor that is not given by god 